Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Almighty God for giving us the grace again to see another Sunday. Um, it's the last Sunday in the month of June. We are grateful to this great God for keeping us um, for the first six months of the year. And it's our prayer that we continue to uphold us all in Jesus' name. And today on uh, this uh, platform of Second Ambassadors, we want to look at another interesting topic which says, it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. And our major test today is from the book of Psalm 37, verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we are grateful uh, for your faithfulness in the first half of this year. Thank you for keeping us, our family members, our loved ones, um, our friends, our colleagues, neighbors, even our country. So this time we are grateful. Lord, we say be exalted in Jesus' name. Thank you for all that you have done on, on, on the front of second ambassadors. Thank you for your bread. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for all that you have enriched us with. We are grateful. Lord, we say be adored in Jesus' name. We pray where we have sinned against you. Please pardon us in the name of Jesus. As we consider this topic, we pray that, Lord, you speak to us and you give us the grace to serve you the more. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And so just as I mentioned earlier, our topic of focus today is it's space to serve Jesus. It's space to serve Jesus. And to start with, I would like to start uh, with our main test, uh, which is what we have in the book of Psalm 37, verse 25. I read from the goodness translation. It says, I am old now. I have lived a long time, but I've never seen good people abandoned by the Lord or their children begging for food. In this particular text, we'll see uh, the psalmist talking about King David giving us you know, his own experience of what he has seen in life. And he, taught, he, he gave a summary of his life experience in this test. And what he's trying to say in essence is that he had never seen those people that have chosen to serve God, people that love God, to lack. He have never seen them, you know, even their children lacking anything. Brothers and sisters, the point we are just trying to make uh, for, at this point is just for us to understand the fact that it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. So that is what we are considering today. And I also like us to remember that if you look at um, biblical stories. We have uh, different stories in the scriptures that talks about the different men and women that God has, uh, who God has used at one point or the other in performing His wonders or His kindness, His, 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 his activities. And you see that if you look at these men and women, none of them, you know, none of them, you know, ended on a very poor note. None of them ended, you know, on a bad note. You see that although their beginning might be uh, challenging, depending on their background, you see that God has been faithful, God you know, was faithful to them to ensure that they finish on a good note. Now let's take a look at some um, examples uh, to just portray this point. Uh, for instance, if you look at the story of Joseph, Joseph was someone, you know, he had a dream, and then uh, because of the fact that his, his brothers were embryos of dream, they sold him to a foreign land, and from there he was faithful. And when they sold him, talking about when he was in the in the house of Potiphar, and he, the, the the wife of the master wanted him to sleep with her, but then he chose to uh, to fear God. He chose to run away from sin, and just because of that, he he was punished, and then he ended up in the prison. Uh, no one would have, as from a human perspective, would have probably said that maybe God was not uh, nice to him. Maybe God was not, uh, maybe God did not protect him. But if you look at the story very well, you know, we, we, we see that God you know, remained faithful to his loved one. Because right there from the prison, we saw how God you know, turned things around and then he left the prison to become the prime minister in the land of Egypt. He left the prison to become the prime minister in a foreign land. At that time, Egypt was like the world power. So that means that he left the prison um, where, you know, and, and of course, we all know, like I, I mentioned to us, how he got to the prison. He got to the prison because he chose to stand for God. And, you know, at that point, it was uh, the, the worst of states anybody can ever be. But then God intervened and then changed the story and he left the prison to become the prime minister. And this is an example of 
and what we meant when we say that it's based to serve Jesus. Another example of someone that we can also remember is that of Peter. Peter, like you all know, at the first time that he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus was when the Lord Jesus used his boat. Fisher was, you know, he, before he allowed the Lord Jesus to use his boat, he tried fishing when he don't get anything and he, he, he was frustrated and the Lord Jesus, you know, um, uh, requested that he give out his boat for him to teach the people. And Peter willingly, you know, surrendered his boat because after all, the boat was not uh, making any difference um, in terms of his income at that particular time. And so he allowed the Lord Jesus to use his boat. And after Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ was done with the salmon, he told him to throw the net into um, the sea so that they'd be able to catch fishes. And Peter, at that time, he, he argued, he, 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 he explained to the, to the Lord Jesus why there was no point doing that again because he had actually made you know, several attempts to do that and for that particular night, he did not catch anything. So the Lord, but based on uh, the, the Lord Jesus' instruction, he tried again and the Bible makes us understand that he caught a lot of fishes to the point that to the extent that the, the, his net broke. Brothers and sisters, and if Jesus had left on that point, that would have made you know Peter to be happy. But one important thing, if you look at in that particular story, and if you look at that text again, that's talking about what we have in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Now, if you look at that story very well, the Lord Jesus did not leave Peter as a fisherman. He told him something. He said, Peter, you shall be made a fisher of men. And that was what happened to Peter. So Peter, you know, God, the Lord Jesus, met Peter as a fisherman. In fact, not even as a fisherman. He met him as a frustrated fisherman. Uh, but then it transformed him to become a fisher of men. And brothers and sisters, still today, we all still remember Peter in the scriptures because of what God did in his life. Someone that should have died and be long forgotten now became someone that you and I, even as God's children, still remembers and still make reference to. The last example I would like to make today to portray the fact that it's best to serve Jesus is talking about my own personal story. Brothers and sisters, it is good and to send out the stories in the scriptures, but sometimes it's also good for us to also say something about ourselves because our testimony is also very important. And so for me, I would like to say that I've seen God help me beyond my human abilities. You know, he has been faithful, he has defended me, protected me. There are times that I didn't even know what to do, that God will be there to give me direction. Um, I'm from a very humble background, but then God has been faithful, you know, to help me in life, in career, in family, even in ministry. So that is why today I am bold to say that it pays to serve Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you, uh, 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 what is uh, getting you engaged or some, some, what is taking your time. But I want you to know that if you just, can just release yourself to the service of this great God, if you can release yourself to the service of this great and mighty God, you will never regret it. And that is why it is important for you to also remember this text. And that will have in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 24 to 38. Acts 10, verse 24 to 38. It makes us remember the point that our God is not a respecter of persons. That means that anyone, anyone that are willingly, you know, submit himself to the service of this great God will enjoy this God. So I want to encourage you so please, as we go in this second part, second half of the year, even as we continue in our work with the Lord, let's be more committed to His work. Let's be more committed to His service. Let's be more committed to a divine assignment. And you will see Him uphold us, encourage us, and help us in Jesus' name. And just as I've uh, um, given us examples of people that have been helped by God, I want us to know that when we serve the Lord diligently, when we are committed to the assignment that is given to us, when we are committed to the task He has committed into our hands, we will see Him you know, come um, in our own situation to help us divinely. That is why it is important for us to know that even there is no way we can achieve God. If yours is given, if yours is serving, no matter what God has, you know, uh, uh, has put into your hands to do, let's from today do our best in kind of those assignments, you know, 
to a, to a point where he himself will be pleased with. I pray that to give us the grace to do so in Jesus' name. And so the point we are making in essence is that God has given us another opportunity to, to see the end of another month. And of course, to see the beginning of another month starting from tomorrow. Let us do our best to serve him well. And so in conclusion, let you and I remember that God has not called anyone to serve him in vain. He is not, he is not a result of any person. He will not shit you. No matter what we do for him, he will always do for an avenue to give us a blessing. He will always do for an avenue to reward us. It's not someone that will just say, serve me. And then all that we do is just to serve him. And then you abandon us. No, the devil sometimes makes us to see and uh, want to just make it seem as if our God is a wicked God. It's not a wicked God, it's a loving God. And so, per adventure, uh, maybe you have been serving God or you have been contemplating why you should serve God. I want you to let you know that it's based to serve Him. And from all um, the stories we have in the scriptures, we will see that God indeed is a faithful father, is a loving father, he cares about you, and so he will not just take your time, but probably and take your, your energy and then use you and then dump you. No, it's not a, it's not an earthly earthly uh, those um taskmaster. He is a wonderful God, he's a good God, he has uh he has the best plan for you, he has his plan towards Bible makers understand that his thoughts towards us, they are thoughts of good, not of evil. To, but to give us an expected end. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He loves me. He wants to give us an expected end. But then, He also wants us to serve Him. So, let's give our best to serve Him. Serve Him with all that you have. Serve Him with your time. Serve Him with your resources. Serve Him with your intellect. Serve Him with uh, uh, the, 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 all that He has given you, your talents. And I pray that. Uh, you continue to help us all in Jesus' name. I also want to say that if you are a man or a father or a mother, ensure that you encourage your children to also serve the Lord so that you all as a family will be mightily blessed by Him. And I pray that this will be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to believe that our God has ministered to us uh, to us again this afternoon. And if you are there and uh, you are listening to us at this time, you have not giving your life to Lord Jesus. You are here to accept him as a Lord and personal Savior. I want to know that this is a moment that God has, uh, 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 has, has made to, to have an encounter with you, for, for you to start that journey with him, for you to start that relationship with him. And so I want to give you the opportunity to accept him as a Lord and personal Savior. If you want to do so, can you just please uh, repeat it be a letter, just Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for loving me. I appreciate you for giving me the grace so the last Sunday of the month of June, I apologize for all my sins. Today I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Wash me with your blood and please write my name in the book of life. Today, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life today and please give me the grace to read with you. Today, I, I receive the Lord Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. And please write my name in the book of life. And on the last day, give me the grace to reign with you in eternity. Thank you because you have done so. For in Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. If you have said that prayer with us, I want to congratulate you for making the best decision anybody can ever make. We want to let you know that God himself has written your name in the book of life. And he, from now, he continue to guide you, to uphold you, to see to it that you will reign with him in eternity. In Jesus' name. And for us, probably, I just is that you are just dedicating yourself to Lord Jesus. I want you to let you know that Jesus loves you and is glad to have you back into the fold. Please let's stay committed to Him and He will continue to help us all in Jesus' name. And on this platform, we also like to encourage as many that are just becoming um, born again at this time to please join a Bible -a church around and look for a Bible believing church. Join them. Let the man of God in the church know that you are a new convert so they can give you the right support. And then if you are just dedicated to the Lord Jesus, let the man of God also know so that they can provide the necessary support to help you in your Christian journey. It's our prayer the good Lord will continue to strengthen and uphold us all in Jesus' name. I also, on this platform, I also like to just say this, and that is for us to remember that prayer itself is a way of communicating with God. So I want to encourage you to please be a man and woman of prayer. Pray in season and even out of season. At the same time, I also encourage you to please study the Word of God so that you can grow. So please take your time to study the Bible, 
and daily so that the Lord himself can speak to you and direct you via his words. It's our prayer that as you read the word of God, you, you, get, you give understanding in Jesus' name. And then if you need us to provide you with the Bible, please feel free to contact us via the phone numbers on the screen or send us an email and using the email address sec.ambassadors at gmail.com. It's our prayer that the good Lord will continue to keep and uphold us all unto that perfect day in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as our custom is in this platform, I would like to just close with this prayer point. And the prayer point is, our dear Holy Father, please give us the grace to serve you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. Father, today we have learned that it's peace to serve Jesus. We pray that you give us the grace to serve you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. Help us to serve you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. And please, on the last day, help us to live to reign with you in eternity in the name of Jesus. As many that are even getting weary, Father, of your service, we pray you encourage them. We pray you strengthen them. We pray that Lord will help them in the name of Jesus. Give us fresh enthusiasm, fresh passion, fresh zeal to serve you in Jesus' name. Thank you, King of Glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. So we are to want to say a big thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are grateful to God for giving us the opportunity to for us to be able to meet. And was our prayer that uh, you continue to give us all the grace to serve Him in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are yet to subscribe to our channel, we want to encourage you to please do so, so that together we can continue to grow as the coming of Christ ambassadors. As we start um, the uh, new journey for the second half of the year, we want to encourage you to please go out, preach the gospel. And please let's continue to raise um, disciples of our Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I wish us all a wonderful week and then a blessed evening. God bless you. Bye-bye.